Yeah, Shalom Israel, Shalom. Rakat the Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai, Hashem Rakat Kadash. The blind is the apostle and the elder is a great millstone who taught me this truth in his entirety, according to the Bible. Peace and salutation to the out there pushing this truth all over the earth. Yeah, quick lesson. You know what I mean? Um, I was watching a video, right? Esau's blessing, the sword, right? Showing off their might, man. You know what I mean? Esau's blessing is no joke, right? So we're going to check this out. Basically, it was Russia flexing their muscle, right? Showing off their military might. And then we'll get into some precepts. Yeah, Mosai's putting the spirit on, on on the nations, man, right? Mosai's putting the spirit on the nations, man, right? Esau's blessing the sword, man, right? Right, putting that spirit of bloodthirstiness on them, man, right? right? But it's all prophecy. Let's grab some precepts, man. But yeah, those are, uh, those, those missiles. Russia's S-400 is a hot commodity with the likes of India and Turkey braving U.S. sanctions to get the anti-aircraft missile system. So these other nations, <laughs> they're like, we don't care if we're going to get economic sanctions from the U.S. We want these missiles, right? We want these missiles, right? That makes me think of uh, Habakkuk 2 verse 7. <laughs> we want these missiles. Yeah, the other, the other nations, man. The other nations, man, right? Habakkuk 2 Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 7. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them? Right. Talking about Babylon the Great, spiritual Babylon, America the Great, spiritual Egypt, right? So these are the nations. They don't care if they're going to get sanctions, man, right? They're rising up suddenly, right? To bite, right? To vex, right? To take spoils. Verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Right. So, you know, America the Great spoiled many nations, man. Pillaged, raped, stolen, robbed, right? So all these other nations, they want their hands. <laughs> these other nations, they don't care if they're going to get the sanctions. They want, they want their hands on this missile system, right? But um, it, does, it, does, it doesn't matter. Because everyone, everyone, even though the Most High is putting these spirits on other nations to rise up against America the Great, everyone's the the, the, the same the same nations that are going to rise up, they're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have a downfall too. They're gonna perish, man. Didn't Ezra see that in a vision, man? He was sore afraid when he saw. Uh, he was sore afraid. Right, Second Ezra thirteen, verse eight. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there is fight. Right, so this is when Yahweh Shai comes back in the, in the midst of World War III, man. Sky is going to crack, Yahweh Shai is going to make his appearance with his mighty angels on his chariots, right? And the militaries are going to be in the midst of fighting each other, are going to turn to fight Yahweh Shai, right? And lo, verse 9, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor, nor any instrument of war. Verse 10. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Right? Sparks and tempests. Flaming breath. Verse 11. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which, which was prepared to fight and burn them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Ezra was afraid, man. 
The prophet Ezra was afraid when he vision, when he saw this vision, man. Right? So, yo, these nations are gathering up to fight. They're flexing their muscle to fight. To fight America the Great, Babylon the Great. Most likely going to put that spirit of uh, fight in them to try and fight Yahweh and his angels. And it's not going to work, man. They're going to get smoked. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Right. So this grandstanding and this showing off of their military might, you know. Right. They're beating the war drums. Right. It's a proclamation amongst the Gentiles to prepare for war, to wake up the mighty men. Right. Verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together around the boat. Salakia. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together around the boat. Thither, cause thy, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right. The valley of Jehoshaphat, the Middle East. So all these troops, all these, all these armies are, are mobilizing to the Middle East. Right. In, prep, in preparation of war. Right, these these uh these these uh these messages that these militaries are sending, you know, showing off their arsenal. Right, it's 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 all in preparation of war. It's all a message. Right, let's get Ezekiel thirty-two. Right, you gotta wake up, gotta wake up and get right with the Most High, man. Right, cause uh we're in some serious times, man, and prophecies are unfolding daily. And those those of us in this truth that are watching. We're seeing these things and we're aligning them with, with scriptures, right? Ezekiel 32, verse 24. And given the warning, right? There is Elam. Yeah, Elam. Ezekiel 32, verse 24. Elam being one of the nations that want to get their hands on this missile system. Elam being India. And all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the neither parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living, right? Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. Right. So this is what's going to befall all these nations, you know, in World War III, right? When Yahweh Shai and his angels come back to establish their throne of righteousness, right? This is what's going to befall them, right? Destruction. You know what I mean? Let's get, uh, let's get, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 13, right? It's, and this is proof that the Mosai is put in this spirit. It's the Mosai that creates this, these scenarios. We're in the Mosai's movie, right? We're in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's movie, right? Isaiah 13, verse 19. Salakia, wrong precept. Isaiah 54. I want to close out with that one. Isaiah 54. Verse 16. Right? This is this is this is proof that uh the most high is uh he's the one behind all of this, man. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created a smith that blowed the coals in the fire. God, the most high is creating the most high is the creator of this, right? The, the smith that blows the coals in the fire, the creator of these instruments of war, the most high, the most high has put this spirit on the on, on this blacksmith. To create these weapons, right? And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. The work being destruction, right? And I have created the waster to destroy, right? These weapons of war. The Most High has put this spirit in, in, into these men to create these weapons of war. I have created the waster to destroy. Khan, that's beautiful right there, man. Kalala Yahweh Beshem Yahweh Beshem Right? Right? Right, let's close out with uh, Isaiah, the one I went to the first time. Isaiah 13, let's close out with this, man. Right, let's close out with this. Isaiah 13, verse, verse, verse 19. Let's close out with this. Verse 19 and, and 19, yeah. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. 
So when Yahawa, when Yahawa, when Yahawa Shai is done, like, right, pursuant to what Ezra saw in that vision, blowing these tempests and these breaths of fire, right? It's going to be a Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 20, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent, tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. Khan, right? So Babylon the Great, spiritual Babylon, spiritual Egypt, America the Great. It's all, it's, uh, it's ultimate, it's ultimate, uh, 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 what's ultimately going to happen to it is, is destruction, man. Right? I pray you're edified. Call Allah, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rakah, Kadash. Dabban, Shai, Apostles, and Elders, a great Muslim who taught me this truth in its entirety. Peace and salutation to the Akim out there pushing this truth all over the earth. Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal.